Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the man, myth, the legend, Mr. Omar Alfaro. How you doing, sir? What's up, Michael? And I am not in Hawaii. It looks cool in that background, but I'm not there. It's just a, uh, yeah. a, a what do you call it? a background that I chose to. Yeah, no, it's fun. Know. I yeah, like it. The way cool. the waves are moving. I got a nice mellow vibe going. I appreciate you. So, uh, you know, first topic we always talk about, probably will for the rest of the year, is your market. Remind people what market you're in and what's happened over the last week because uh, things are getting nutty with mortgage rates going up to 7%. Oh, man, things are crazy. Um, I'm in the market of Southern California, which is Apple Valley, Victorville, Asperia, Phelan, um, Oak Hills, Lucerne, um, Atlanto. So primarily about, you know, 50, 45, 50 minutes north of uh, Ranch of Cucamonga in Southern California. Very, very cool. Yep. So uh, what did you see this last week? Again, uh, is inventory building? What's happened to cancellations? Uh because again, rates, you know, damn, that was fast. Rates went from like six to seven seemingly overnight. And I'm wondering if it's impacting uh, impacting your market. Um, it has. Uh, it's impacted it some st- substantially. A lot of the offers that came through on the last, last week's episode, we talked about that we had some offers that came in on some of our properties. None of them panned out because they were waiting and they w- weren't sure where that interest rate increase was going to go to. And, you know, it going 0.75 for a traditional, what do you call it, uh, consumer, mm-hmm. that prices you out of what you were going to make or what you were going to offer. So needless to say, those four offers, um, they all they all told me that they can't proceed forward, not unless we want to have a $25,000 price reduction. I said, no, not, not going to happen. So we'll wait. Yeah. And um, now we're at, oh, we're over 1,700 homes. Okay. This is crazy though. Last week we were at 1699 yep. or 1698. Okay. Yep. And you figure we're at 17, 1707, right? Right now. Right. But you got to remember there's still pendings that, that removed off the market. Mm-hmm. There's still solds that were removed. Sure. That means there was an increase of it's not it's not a lot, seven or eight properties, but if you took 150 houses off the market. That puts yeah. you, you know, that puts you down at 16 or 1550. Mm-hmm. That means 150 new properties came on the market to replenish what was moved. But now I'm looking at that at 1707. Um, it's, I think it's just going to keep on increasing, increasing. We're going to hit 1800, especially you think that this uh, lower or that, that interest rate increase is going to mm-hmm. make people want to buy more. No. It's going to deter people from buying and it's going to lower the amount of stuff that goes pending plus adding new inventory, right? Right. For the wishful pricing of those sellers that missed the market six months ago. Yeah. And I'm going to say we're going to be at 1800 in the next 45 days. Yeah. So this is going to be very interesting to look at this because I'm going to, if you're going to put 1800 as the over under, I'm taking the under. And let me tell you why. Well, actually, before we go there, there's one more thing I want to talk about because, you know, we went from 1698 to 1708. So increase of, you know, eight or nine units, whatever. But the other thing that happened in there is you had some cancellations, right? This is not necessarily all new new inventory, right? So uh, how many do you have? Know how many cancellations were last year? Yeah, there was 50, over 50, 50 properties that canceled. Yeah. And for example, four, like you had four, right? Were those officially pending? Right? No, that, that, they weren't officially pending. They were just like, just almost there. Right. So they were basically offers in, let's see what happens with rates. We can't get our rate lock. We can't buy, we need a discount or we're not, not proceeding. Got it. So Correct. there's some of that, right? So, um, so again, I, I think, so it's going to be very interesting. You know, this, the winter is seasonally Here's slow here. <laughs> Yeah, it's just seasonally slower. I uh, I suspect what you're about to start seeing is not cancellations of offers. I think what you're about to start seeing is cancellation of listings and expired. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of wish pricing. There's a lot of people that say, hey, honey, if we can get 450, we'll sell. But if we get 400, we can't sell. Right. Right. We'll, we will stay put. You're going to get a lot of people saying we'll stay put. We'll try again in March. We'll try again in April. Again, you're the expert. You're in the market. It's just human psychology. I think there's a lot of people when they're afraid, they pull back. They're just going to wait. I don't yep. know what happens in March. 
it'll it'll change, but I actually would take the under. I don't think you get to 1800 because I think you're going to get a lot more ca- listing cancellations and expired listings will drag that number down. What do you think? If you're if you're going to take the under, um, yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm going to say honestly because this is just me. We got. About- I think I think you're too close. I think you're in it. You've got inventory. You're a little stressed. You're like, oh my god, it keeps going up and up and up. But you don't look at the uh, stories behind the sellers. Right. But look at this. Sure okay. I'm, a tra- I'm still a traditional um, agent, right? I'm oh, a yeah. broker yeah, yeah. that go out and get deals. Yeah. I got like five or six listings coming myself. Okay. Yep. Okay. We got other inventory that, you know, one's going to go back on the market, just me. Yep. Um, and that's just one person. Multiply so, that so, by so- Awesome. Okay. Well, let's, I, I think, you, again, let me just ask some questions. No. So you have five listings that are coming. Yeah. Brand new, just normal sellers. I understand. But let's have an honest discussion. Yeah. Of those five, how many of them do you think are going to come out what, at what I would call wish pricing day one? None of them. Really? So you no. got them all to understand this is not March. It's September Correct. and your hope at 480 is now 430 or whatever. Okay. All right. I would argue that most agents, if they had five listings coming, four of them are wish pricing. You're hundred oh, percent. So again, I consider four listings that are wish pricings, not real listings. They're going to just expire or fall off. Right. That's, that's right. what I'm looking at. But again, if you have five listing comings, you had the harm. Cause this is the problem with agents today. Your time is important. If you're going to take five listings and not have the hard conversation day one, you're setting yourself up for four angry phone calls. Why would you want that? Yeah. Right. So I am curious. And again, you don't name them or anything, but you had sit down conversations with five sellers. Mm -hmm. All of your five sellers have looked at Zillow. All of them thought they knew what their house was worth. How much lower did you have to get them before you accepted the listing? 10%, 5%? I would probably say, hey, you know what? Uh, just on this last one, uh, yeah, I went, yeah, it was like 6 or 7% less. It's going to create a frenzy. Lowest property or lowest price property just to get it sold, obviously. Okay. Um, and the whole psychology of it is like, would you rather have five or six people fighting for your house or waiting for one in 45 days? Yeah. And okay. they all said, no, we want multiples. Okay, great. So then you are in agreement that we are going to be listing it at a price that it's going to be sold. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Here, sign the paper. And then, okay. and then, and then that's it. But that's, that's because I conveyed that message. Right. Most agents don't. No. So the they last don't. thing I will ask you on this, cause this is going to be fun. I want to note these like, off air, write down the five names because I want to follow up on these five names in a couple of weeks. How many of these five have to sell? Like if they get a number close or are they, do they want to sell? Like, yeah, and you obviously know the difference. Wants to sell means we get our number, we'll go. If we get something too low, we'll just stay put. How many have to sell versus want to sell? I would probably say three need to sell okay sorry two want to sell okay all right because that'd be very interesting so yeah do me a favor write down their last names write down a w for want and an n for need so again three two let's follow up next week or the week after and see what happened because again i think the psychology of sellers and psychology of buyers is so interesting today and uh, working with a professional like you who have hard conversations day one it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. What else is 100%. going on in the market? And if somebody wanted to sell with a professional, how should they reach out to you? Yeah, uh, guys, the, the way the market's working right now is like, if you need to sell, um, you know, I would say do so. If you want to sell, just figure out where you're going to be going, first of which. And I'm in that SoCal market. So anything in the high desert, uh, even Southern California, Rancho, San Bernardino, Ontario, um, you know, reach out to me. You guys can reach out to me at omaralfaro.com or follow me on IG, um, invest with Omar. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.